Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Auto. We're here at the shop taking a look at this 2013. This is a Ford F-150. Woo, it's hot. So the customer's complaint is that the vehicle is intermittently a no start. Uh, it actually got towed in because it died while they were driving it. Now the shop is telling me that when the vehicle came in, it would actually crank and it would start for a second, but then it would shut off. And it did that for a while until they finally got it to start. And then after that, it just started every single time. They did tell me that they scanned it and there was a bunch of communication codes that were stored. So they wanted me to take a look at it. Now, one thing that they did replace was the ignition switch or the ignition lock cylinder because they had a code uh, for the key in the ignition switch so anyway long story short we're here now to check it out so i'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing starts and as you can see just as i suspected the vehicle started right up so let's go ahead and try that again i'm gonna shut the key off turn the key back on put my foot on the brake crank it and again this thing started right up so of course it always seems to happen this way the vehicle only acts up when the customer has it once they bring it into the shop or once the shop calls me to come look at it everything's back to work and fine so one thing i am noticing is that we do have a check engine light right here on the cluster the other thing i'd like to point out to you guys is that it's a really hot day outside 102 degrees fahrenheit so excuse me if i'm sweating and if i might seem a little agitated because you know this heat really starts to get to me kind of makes me wonder and question all the decisions i've ever made in my life but that's a story for another time i'm gonna go ahead and hook my scan tool up to this thing we're gonna run a full scan and uh, see what codes we got. All right guys, so I already went ahead and connected the VCI for my scan tool, but I wanted to show you something really quick. And this is just kind of a quick tip for any of you guys, you know, doing this kind of work. If you guys are ever wondering why you don't have communication or if you're not able to do certain functions on your scan tool when you've got it connected to the vehicle, always come down here and double check and make sure that you're actually plugged into the real OBD2 port. Uh, oftentimes you'll find that some of these vehicles are equipped with like an aftermarket GPS tracker or something like that. And the OBD2 port that's there is actually a dummy OBD2 port. So just always take a minute to stick your head up under here and try to find the actual connector that connects to the main wiring harness. As you can see, I had to disconnect this one so that I can connect directly to the OBD2 port from the factory. Okay, so the scan tool that we're gonna be using today is the Zenith Z7. I'm pretty sure it's got a built-in screen recorder. So let me see if I can start that. All right, so we're gonna start off by going into diagnosis. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and automatically detect the VIN number. And there's our vehicle, a 2013 Ford F-150 with a 3.5 liter eco boost so here we have a list of all of our modules but i'm just going to go ahead and select the topology map okay so here we have our topology map as you can see we have the h can and the l can so let's go ahead and run a full scan this is going to go through all the modules and tell us where we have codes and show us whether or not we have something that's not communicating okay so the code scan was pretty quick let's just click on show dtc okay so it looks like we only have a few codes here we have two codes in the pcm and one in the HVAC unit. In the PCM, we have this uh, PO12B00 turbocharger inlet pressure sensor circuit range performance. Then we also have this PO131 for O2 sensor circuit low voltage bank one sensor one. All right, so it looks like the shop may have deleted the codes that were stored because uh, they told me that they had a bunch of communication codes. I'm not seeing that right now. I'm gonna go ask the mechanic if they saved the report from the initial scan that they did when the vehicle came in because right now we have nothing in the history, so I really have no direction. All right guys, so I did just speak to the mechanic and yes, unfortunately, he did clear the codes before we got here. However, luckily he saved a report and he was able to print it out for me. So here are all the codes that the vehicle had before we got here. Now I did already look through this. And let me tell you what I found interesting is that well, starting off here at the top in the PCM, you know, we've got some codes here for the oxygen sensor and a PO420 and a PO430. I'm not too concerned with these codes. However, the codes that stick out to me, if you take a look here in the ABS module, we have a U100 code for lost communication with the PCM. Then if we move down to the instrument panel, you can see we also have a lost communication with the ECM. So not only is the ABS module saying that it couldn't communicate with the PCM, the instrument cluster was saying the same thing. It gets even better. Let's flip over to the next page. In the BCM, look what we have. Lost communication with the ECM. In the HVAC control module, invalid data from the ECM. In the OCS module, look what we have. Lost communication with the ECM. In the power steering control module, look what we have. Lost communication with the ECM. And finally, on the last page, take a look at what our transfer case control module was saying. Lost communication with the ECM. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our problem is the ECM is intermittently going offline. Now, if you think about it none of these modules are complaining about not being able to communicate with each other abs module isn't saying it can't communicate with the bcm the bcm is not saying it can't communicate with the hvac control module all of these modules are saying the exact same thing 
we cannot communicate with the ECM. So where do we need to put our main focus on? That's right, the ECM. We need to figure out why intermittently it's cutting offline. Of course, there's a multitude of reasons that an ECM would stop communicating. For one, you can have an issue where it's losing a power or a ground. Another reason could be there's an issue with the communication lines. Another reason that I've seen modules lose communication is issues with the five volt reference being shorted. So we have a multitude of things that we need to check before we can say this is a bad PCM. Two days later. All right guys, fast forward. We're back here at the shop. It's been a couple days since we were last here. I'll be honest with you, the other day when we were checking the truck, it was just way too hot outside and I couldn't get it to act up. So eventually I kind of just gave up and what I told them was, hey, drive the truck around, put some miles on it and just call me back whenever the truck is acting up. So I got a call back this morning saying that the truck wasn't starting anymore. Luckily, they were able to pull it into the shop. That way we're not outside in the sun. So let's go take a look at the truck and see what we can figure out. All right, so let's hop inside the truck. We got the key in the ignition. Let's go ahead and turn it on. There's our built Ford Tough. And this is what we're looking for, guys, right here. Now, I've said this before. Anytime you see these dashes on the cluster in place of the mileage, that's a really good indicator that the ECM is not communicating. So at this point, I'm pretty sure the truck is not going to start. Let's see if it cranks. Nope, our engine didn't even attempt to crank. Take a look over here. I'm going to turn the key to the start position. And we got nothing. This is exactly what we were hoping for. We wanted to catch this truck whenever the ECM was not communicating. We can now proceed to doing our checks. We're gonna go directly for the PCM. We're gonna check our powers, our grounds, our wake up signal, make sure that everything it needs is there. And if anything's missing, we're gonna trace it down. All right, so moving under the hood, the ECM or PCM is located right over here. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is gonna be the connector we're after. So let me go ahead and remove this back cover. All right, so we managed to get the cover off the back of the connector for the PCM. Pretty simple, just remove the tape that's down here and it's got Got a couple of clips now taking a look at the connector you can see these three yellow wires on the side those are going to be our main powers and right underneath it we have our grounds so three powers four grounds let's go ahead and start by checking these as you can see i got my power probe right here we're just going to use this like a multimeter and this is my little back probe so we're just going to gently slide the back probe into the back of the connector we're going to start with one of the powers And if you take a look, this is pretty interesting. It's kind of coming and going. Let's check the one next to it. We got the same thing happening over here. Our power is kind of coming and going. Let's check the next power. And we got the exact same thing happening over here. Again, all three of these wires come from the same power source. That's gonna be the PCM power relay. And let's not forget that it is the job of the PCM to control that relay. Let's go ahead and check the grounds while we're at it. So I'm just gonna slide the back probe into the first ground. And if you look at the meter, you can see we got a good ground there. Let's check the next one. We're showing ground there as well. Check the next one. Looks like a good ground. And finally check the last ground. Looks good to me. All right guys, so we went ahead and connected the battery charger. We got the top on tornado 90,000 hooked up all right so up next we're gonna go ahead and check our ISPR signal that's going to be this gray and brown wire right there that's pin uh, 48 let's go ahead and slide in the back probe as you guys can see we have full system voltage right there next up let's go ahead and check pin 28 which is gonna be this violet and orange wire this is the wake-up signal from the BCM so I'm gonna go ahead and slide my back probe in here. And as you guys can see, we got full system voltage as well. So we know the BCM is trying to wake up the PCM. Looks like the only thing we really need to worry about is going to be the power on these yellow wires that come from the PCM power relay. So once again, I'm gonna back probe them and take a look at our reading. You can see our voltage is just kind of coming and going. It's all over the place. That's not what we wanna see. We wanna see a nice steady voltage. So let's go ahead and move over to the so let's go ahead and move come on man so let's go ahead and move over to the fuse box all right so we're here at the fuse box located on the front of the engine bay and our pcm power relay according to the diagram is going to be this one right here in the corner oh and just by touching it this thing feels really hot now the diagram does say that the power coming from this pcm relay exits the fuse box through fuse number 75 which is going to be this one right here let's go ahead and see what reading we get at the fuse and as you can see we pretty much have the same thing our voltage is going up and down we don't have a steady reading now let's check the other side of the fuse and over here we got the same thing our voltage is coming and going oh, wait a second did you guys see that for a moment there i pushed down on the fuse and we had steady power let me push down on it again yeah check that out if i apply pressure downward to the fuse we have a steady voltage and i think i heard the throttle body click take a listen 
I'm gonna push down on the fuse with my finger and see if you can hear the throttle body opening and closing. So I'm gonna push it down. You guys hear that? Well, it's not doing it anymore. I think I may have pushed it too hard. Let's check our voltage again. Okay, so we're back to having a steady voltage over here. Now that's staying pretty steady right now. Let's check our voltage back at the PCM. All right, so we're gonna slide our back probe back into one of the yellow wires. And there we have it, a steady voltage. Let's take a look inside. If you look closely, you can see our numbers are showing up for our mileage. That means the PCM is back online. Our issue has to be the connection within this fuse right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out. All right, so I got a pair of pliers. Let's go ahead and just pop this fuse out. Uh, I might need some thinner pliers. Well, let's just see if we can pop it out with a, a pick tool and this test light right here. Oop, that went flying. Where'd it go? All right, guys, so I seem to have lost the fuse. I don't know where it went. It fell somewhere in here. But anyway, let's take a look inside of the fuse hole. You can see our terminals inside. I don't see any corrosion. The terminal on the top side of the screen does look a little bit more spread open than the bottom. So we could try to close it in. I don't know if that's gonna be possible. Yeah, so we got the pick tool in there. Let's see if we can just kind of squeeze this together. Just very gently, you don't wanna bend it too much or break it. Let's try the other side. Come in from this side and just kind of push it together. All right, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and pop another fuse in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in a fresh new fuse. Make sure it's seated properly. All right, so we got our fresh new fuse installed. It's in there really tight. Let's go ahead and turn the key on. And pay attention, see if we have our mileage right there. Let's see if our engine starts up. Okay, she started right up and she sounds great. That's a fix.